Welcome back to The Posture Pros. I'm Dr. Pascal with Dr. Dan. Today, we wanna to talk about scoliosis. We are currently in the month of June, and most people don't know this, but June is Scoliosis Awareness Month. There's a lot of misconceptions, just misinformation regarding the topic of scoliosis. So we wanna take this opportunity today to talk about, number one, what scoliosis is. Number two, how do you detect it, or the signs and symptoms. Three, we'll talk about the causes or the hereditary nature of it. Number four, we'll talk about the traditional approach of how we would typically treat scoliosis. And then number five, we're gonna talk about modern advances in scoliosis management using corrective chiropractic. Yeah, now the, the issue a lot of times with scoliosis is most people don't know maybe what it is, but also where to go to find help. And we are so for fortunate to have in our office, Dr. Pascal, who is the most trained professional here in the city on scoliosis and the modern corrective approaches that we could do and to help people with scoliosis. So first of all, Dr. Pascal, Maybe, what is scoliosis? What, what should someone look, be looking for? So we've heard this term before, probably, especially if you're a parent, but scoliosis is a Latin word that really means the S shape of the spine. So when we're looking at a spine from the front, it should be nice and straight. When we're dealing with scoliosis, it starts to adopt kind of an S shaped curvature. And then if we were to look at the spine from on top, the hallmark sign of scoliosis is that the spine also starts to do like this corkscrew or rotation. Okay. okay? Now, when someone, let's say, may have scoliosis or a, patient, or, or a parent is concerned about maybe their child having scoliosis, what signs or symptoms would they be looking for? That's a great question. So there are a number of signs and symptoms, but you know, maybe if we could even just take a step back, it's not just a teenage problem though. So I think people would all automatically assume that you think scoliosis, we've been trained to think that scoliosis, you, you go right to the image in your brain of a, a teenager that's growing, hitting puberty. And yes, we do see it in teens, but it's actually more common in adults over 60. So according to a research paper that was recently done by Dr. McAvini and all, they found that up to 36%, yes, you know, over one in three adults over the age of 60 can and likely will be affected by scoliosis, okay? okay? And so the scoliosis will cause potentially pain, right? It can cause cosmetic issues. We're obviously concerned about progression. And then we're also, like when we're talking about adults, really long-term disability because of the severity of that pain, okay? okay. So, so if someone, a parent wants to say, well, how do I you know, detect this early on in my child? Well, number one is looking at your child from behind. So if you were to look at a, a child from behind, there are a few typical signs that we would see in scoliosis. So number one, the shoulders sit uneven, right? That's one of right. the biggest things. Yeah, one shoulder yeah. is really lower than the other. That is a big red flag that something is happening inside the spine. And then at the same time of those shoulders tilting, you might find that one of those shoulder blades kind of yeah. pops off the back. Yeah, mm -hmm. we call it scapular winging. Number two is you can actually sometimes see sort of like an S shape to the spine. Like if you look at the spine, you see this S shape twisting when you're looking at them from behind, obviously with the shirt off. Number three would be their waistline becomes uneven, right? Because the, yeah, right, you, you notice pelvis. one hip might be up versus the other. And so you see like the indentations being different. And so if the indentations are different, and number four, you know, one hip or the pants slope to the side, again, a classic sign that something is happening there. And the last one is if we have the child bend forward, reaching forward, their back should round, but it should round like, you know, very evenly. And in scoliosis, because of that rotation, when they bend forward, you, you notice humping is how we call it, but really it's like a bump on one side of the spine that is uneven compared to the other. So those are like your five signs. If you see any of those in a growing child, that's like a red flag, get them checked right away especially in that growth phase. Now, if someone is concerned or knows that either they have scoliosis or a family member has scoliosis, one of the questions usually is, well, is it hereditary? Will my child have it? Or, or what, or what kind of happens there? Right, so a lot of people want to know, okay, did I do something wrong, right? right. Because automatically like a parent guilt, did I do something wrong? And then if you didn't do something wrong, is it hereditary? Well, number one, to address that, no, you didn't do anything wrong. 80% of cases of scoliosis are idiopathic. In other words, 
We have no idea why this happened. They just start to occur, okay? It's a bone growth problem. And so as kids start growing and they have that really fast growth, the bones start to grow unevenly, which causes the shifting and twisting of the spine, okay? So rest assured, parents, you did not do anything wrong. Is it hereditary? Yeah, there's about a 30% hereditary component. So if you have multiple children, one kid has scoliosis, by all means, get every child in that family checked because the earlier we can detect it, the better the result is gonna be. And that's right. really the key thing there is catching this problem as early as possible is, is absolutely the key. So we wanna look at a women, right, between the ages of 10 and 12, we wanna get them screened twice, and then boys 11 and 13, and that's simply because females typically hit puberty a little bit earlier, right. okay? So that key is early detection. Okay, now what about current treatment options, let's say for in, let's say the traditional model? Yeah, and, and you know, we went away from getting on top of scoliosis early back in the late 90s, right? I think a lot of research papers seem to think that any type of interventions for scoliosis, you know, whatever type of treatment, physical therapy, bracing, chiropractic, that none of it was going to work. So the traditional belief said, like, let's just watch these kids. We watch and wait oftentimes until they get so severe that they might require surgery. Right. And that's really the main approach. Sometimes, you know, in hospitals, they might put uh, like a cast type brace where they just try and bend the spine or support the spine a little bit. But the current treatment approach is really watch and wait until that scoliosis can get to a surgical level, unfortunately. Yeah. That's the current treatment. Now, just from clinical experience, we know that we could do better. Absolutely. So what are, let's say, conservative care approaches that are now available to, to patients? Right, so there's a number of things that we can do, right? And this is always gonna depend on the age of the patient, what their, their concerns are regarding the scoliosis, what their goals are for long-term outcomes, right? Are we only concerned about pain? Are we only concerned about the cosmetic aspect? Are we worried about you know, the curve getting worse and avoiding surgery? Or in an adult, progressing to the fact or to the point where it's so painful that it's disabling and you know, you're know you walking around with a cane or a walker. So the treatment is gonna be largely dependent on what are the desires and the goals. Mm -hmm. But we use a combination of things. Number one, exercise, exercise, exercise. There are scoliosis specific exercises that we can do to help strengthen the core, but really reduce those curves and help hold the patient in a better position to improve the posture and prevent progression. Number two, chiropractic specific adjustments. When we're talking about a scoliotic curve, you know, oftentimes, especially in a growing teen, we're gonna have areas of that spine that are super rigid. Mm -hmm. When that spine is rigid and fixated, it's really hard to unwind the curve or create correction by reducing those curves. So with our chiropractic specific adjustments, we can improve the spinal mobility in those stiff areas, allowing us to then do the other things to straighten up the curve. Okay, so we have exercise, chiropractic adjustments. We also use what's called spinal traction. So we have things that are called like scoliosis rolls that the patient can use at home. We have three-dimensional traction tables in the office. And what we're doing there is it's braces for teeth. I think all parents get that. You put braces on teeth and you pull them in a certain direction to get them straightened out. We do the same thing to the spine, right? So we gently pull on the spine, adding a little bit of pressure to help undo, unwind those curves and straighten the spine. And as that's repeated over and over, we can change that spine's curvature or reduce it, you know, by a degree or a couple of degrees slowly over time. Okay, and then lastly, it's using things like three-dimensional custom braces and using heel lifts to help uh, balance the pelvis and undo this postural shifting. So hopefully this, this information could help you, but also provide hope. I think that's a key thing, especially as, as a parent, you, uh, when something is, is wrong with your child, you want something, you know, you want a direction, you want to help them. But like we talked about, it's not just about kids and adolescents, but it's also about as you're aging to make sure that your spine stays straight and strong. So if there's any questions or concerns, obviously reach out to us, but also if there's someone you know that could, could benefit from this information, please tag them on, uh, on the, uh, the video here and we'll do anything we can to help. So again, thanks for watching Posture Pros and we'll see you next time.